Good day, everyone. My name is Adela Jafawa Zuluatobi. I'll be presenting to you my results, my Yoruba results and cultural center. I call it Ilio Oro. It's a Yoruba term that means house of wealth or house of riches. So every time we all talk about our culture, we all try to, you know, emphasize our, how rich our culture is. So I'll be doing so today as well for the Yoruba culture. So I did my design, trying to speak for itself, trying to emphasize how rich the Yoruba culture is. I, I intended for every viewer to notice it from seven miles away. So I call it the Ilior Resort. So looking at the 15 elements, we were asked to, to focus on, on the brief, the aesthetics, the material, culture, process, and spirituality. For my aesthetics, I looked into the Yoruba fabrics, the Adire and Ashoke in particular. Then I looked at the Yoruba definition tree and Kauri. Those are used for consultation of the ancestors. Then I used the Yoruba patterns and motifs. Looking at material, I, I, I looked at tamas resistant trees and bamboos, um, the earth material that is laterite, stones, then trying to focus on sustainability because the structure is going to be in Nigeria and we all know Nigeria has issues of light in this country. So the building will be integrated, the building integrated photovoltaic panels. Those are just in the normal term we know as solar panels. Cultural and life, lifestyle, the building has a courtyard and several opening spaces because the Yoruba people live outside. They use most of their time outside. Then I have parting spaces and social, social interrelationship spaces. That was looking at um, the Owambe and spaces for for elders to tell stories. And I looked at how elegant the Yoruba's dress and how dramatic their lifestyle is. Process and cost. The building used Watson and Daog on the first and second floor for the external skin. Then I employ local craftsmanship because I'll be having sculpted posts and sculpted element all around the building. Then for the fabrics, the women will be cutting and sewing them and they'll be implementing those on site. Then spiritual, spirituality and philosophy. We'll be looking at the sculpted posts, how the Yobas use that to tell stories of their ancestors or past kings, sometimes their gods. Then our houses, houses to the Yorubas are seen as something that is socially significant to them. It tells who they are as a person, maybe how rich or the kind of um, power the person has in the society. And sometimes a religious belief. Then the Okwan Ifa and the Oweyo, those are Yoruba terms for divination tree and cowry. I use those as a concept for my building. Looking at precedent studies, the first one, this one, is the ancient royal palace in Abelkuta. You would notice the dramatic roof. It is called the Adeli, meaning in English, a roof. But also in this particular building, the roof is dramatic to emphasize the purpose of that building, that is a palace. So a daily, a crown. And to the next building is a royal family house in Ijebode. The structure is a two-story structure and you notice 
the aesthetical elements, the architectures, the royal symbols, and lots of outdoor spaces. You see the balcony, terrace. And the third one is the palace courtyard in Ekiti. Here you would notice the courtyard and the sculpted posts used to support the eaves of the roof. Looking at modern precedents, I, I looked at the cocoa house in Ibadan because I was designing a multi-story building. And the building is 26 stories, about 105 meters. It was once the tallest building in tropical Africa. And to the next one, a royal family house in Ibadan. Here, yeah, the reason is for the motifs. These are royal motifs, royal Yoruba motifs. And you'll notice the elegant columns as well. And the last one is the BCA Otowa in Kotonobini. It's a multi-story commercial complex. To my conceptual process, I used the cowrie and okwanifa. Okwanifa is the definition tree. Cowrie is called oweyo. So I used the oweyo, that is the cowrie in elevation, and the okwanifa in plan. So the idea was to place the uh, Kauri on the Okwan. In fact, the Yorubas use these two items to to call or to seek or reach out to their ancestors. So doing this in the design, the 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 Kauri is going to constantly be on the Okwan. In fact, that is the divination tree. Simply meaning our ancestors are continually going to be with us. You don't need to call them just when you need them. They are already here. So from the Kauri concepts, combined the two forms, I tried to sketch out how my layout could possibly be. Then the initial elevation idea. Then I had other sketches of my auxiliary buildings. This one is the Owambe Pavilion. I got the concept of this from this sculpt here. If you look at the head of this sculpt and you look at this, you see a resemblance. Then for this dining table for my restaurants, I used a broom. We call it a ballet in Yoruba, this. So it's just like a broom standing, then it, it tries to open up. If you stand the broom, it will try to open up by itself. So that was the concept for the table. And the last one is the Alo Pavilion. It's a pavilion to just tell stories, folklore, and histories. Now to my mood board and materials. Let me take my materials first. See the rammed earth. This is another type of rammed earth, depending on where it is found. And this is earth also, but carved bamboo, the adire fabric of the universe, and the timber. So looking at my mood board, you notice this first one. It's the Ife head. Then you see this pavilion. I liked this reception deck. I used something similar. It's so natural. And I liked this space. You would notice the clay finish and it looks so modern regardless. Then this pavilion open to the sky, the colors and the greens. And this was a mood board for my museum. These baskets, I use them as lights at the end of the day. And this symbol is a Yoruba symbol that signifies royalty. It comes in different dimensions, and you'll see some of them in my design. This is not the only one. You can, this is just two, it can be four, it can be six, it can be continuous. So you'll see that in my design. And this sit out, I used something similar, but I used some of these sculpted heads for this. You'll see that in the design. So going into my floor plan, from the ground floor, you get into the reception. From the reception, you could 
go to the museum or from outside you could come into the museum and from the reception there's a courtyard that's um, sculpted posts all around it and i intend that for social interaction and a libation ground and to the right is an event hall you could come in through that from outside as well and i have this hallway that leads into an indoor restaurant that serves the pool behind and i have conveniences that's my ground floor for the first floor i have just management and admin offices and i have some retail outlets and like a library a library and book shop and i have a furniture showroom because the yorubas did a lot with wood sculpted posts furniture tables chairs so i couldn't just avoid doing this in the design and i have the salon and spa this was really focusing on the women the yorubas have a lot to do when it comes to local hairstyles so it was important i considered that in my design and i have the kitchen on this floor serving the ground floor and the next floor up above it where i have the outdoor outdoor restaurants and i have a gym for exercise so on the second floor i have the open restaurant it's an outdoor space for restaurant um, dining eating relaxation anything you want to do it's just to serve the courtyard space because i couldn't create so much for them on the ground floor so they are having that big courtyard they like to have on the second floor then you would notice this these are the heads that are serving as um should i say small huts where people can sit and look outwards or have private conversations then these are like the roofs of the entrance on the ground floors but they were intentional that way if you look at this plan it looks just like the okonifa and these things have meaning this is the uju okon that is the eyes of the tree and this is the ese okon this is the leg of the tree then the tree has so many embellishments around and i tried to do that on the plan so on my third floor i have the guest suits on this particular floor i have just two because of the shape of the building the form i have just two you can look down into the courtyard and they still have their outdoor living spaces the sit out and this is the lift and there's a stairs for both vertical movement in the building then this is typical fourth to 11th floor do there are little differences in size but same layout so they have the sit out as usual but this time three guest rooms and every guest room still has a balcony to sit out because the yoruba people live outside they like to have outdoor spaces they want to know what is going on and to my 12th floor i have another guest suite two, two rooms each to the sides sit out as well and on the last floor i have a sky lounge just majorly to view the landscape and enjoy the view and how interesting the whole resort is take pictures you know come there in the evening to receive <laughs> fresh air and stuff like that and this is a section i wanted you to have an idea of what it looks like and how it could possibly work so this is the ground floor the first floor this is the outdoor restaurant on the second floor and these are the guest accommodation so you notice some black lines those are the core of the building the structural support of the building and those are going to be in concrete i could not avoid that but for my walls they are going to be rammed it and for this outside you notice the bamboo it is the water and the so this is just going to be battered with laterite and 
it will have openings. You'll see that in my elevation soon. It will be carved out to allow for ventilation and lightning on my first floor. So this is to serve two purposes, for you to see the area view and also for it to be my site plan. So coming into the, into the facility, the first thing you notice is this pavilion. This is the Owambe pavilion. The Yorubas like partying, so most people can come there to have their parties. Then the next is the resort itself. And there's parking for the visitors and staffs. And this is the Alor pavilion facing the pool. That's where people can sit to enjoy the pool, their stories, gist, and all that. This pool is supposed to serve this, this pavilion. And this is the royal symbol I was talking about. If you see this one, it is four. Unlike the first one you saw, that was two. And if you look at the building, you see similar as the openings. So this place was intentional. I'm having a mostly building. I need to think about how people move the building. So in case of emergency, this place is supposed to serve as emergency points where everybody comes out and waits. Yes, and this is my resort. This is the approach view. When you come in, you notice the colors. You notice the fabric. The universe do a lot with their fabrics. They are all very So this external skeleton is going to be built with wood, coated with steel, and each frame will have a fabric sewn into it. So these were the parts I was talking about. They are heads. This one in front is the male if a head. And inside it, someone can go inside from behind to actually see the environment. And these were the carvings I was talking about to allow lighting and um, air movement to the first floor. And you notice these horses. The horses are common to Yoruba kings, especially those of Ijebu. They ride horses, and it is part of their culture. They have this um, celebration they do that is called Ojidioba, and you'd see a lot of royal families on horses. So it was important I had it that. At the entrance, you notice the sculpted post supporting the entrance porch. This is another view from the right view. You notice the symbols I talked about earlier as well. This is the left view. This is the view from the pool. The pool took the form of one of, the shape of one of the royal symbols. And you notice the sculpted post as well supporting the shade of the pool for someone who wants to relax. This is another rare view. I have a lot of views because I wanted you all to, to see the building clearly. So this is the rear area view. You can see the pool. You can see the Alor Pavilion, the Owambe Pavilion. And these, uh, these are the female if a head. So they are also odds for people to sit in from the outer floor. And this is my reception. This was the reception text I talked about earlier. I liked it. And these are paintings of Yoruba drummers. You notice their headgear, the beads, their garments. The garment is called Agbada. And this is the sitting area of my reception. You will notice the Adire fabric on your chair. You will notice the sculpted post at the libation grant, that is the courtyard from the reception. You'd see the basket lights, the wood ceiling. And this is my museum. I tried as much as possible to emphasize um, Yoruba elements in the museum. You see the sculpted post. You see some of the Ife heads. 
you will see staffs like the Oromia staff, Udua staff, King staff. You see a lot of those, and I try to show some paintings. And this is looking a close look at some of the heads and staffs. And this is the restaurant, the outdoor restaurant. But yeah, I removed the furniture because I wanted you to have a full view of what it looks like. So these are the pots. If you look behind, you see um, cutouts for people to actually go in and sit. They are sit inside there. And there's openings for fenestration and ventilation. And of course, you can see the seat out on each floor for every visitor on each floor to have a full view of their environment. They have in front and at the back on each floor. So you can just omit the view. And this is the furniture of the outdoor restaurant. Like I said earlier, I took the phone from a broom, the opening broom, and you notice the Yoruba baskets with lighting. So people sit and dine here. And this is my guest suit, one of the ones. I used the Yoruba fabrics for the beddings. I tried to put in some natural elements so everything looks so natural. And you'd notice the basket light as well. And this is the Owambe pavilion where they can have parties. Um, I used a lot of greens and wood because the Yoruba use a lot of wood. And you notice some sculpted posts and the talking drum. You would have a closer view of the talking drum. So this is the talking drum columns. Just to emphasize that the space you are in is for entertainment. So the Yoruba use talking drums to um, make sounds for whatever cultural event they are. And as well, you notice the colorful fabrics in the pavilion. So this is an area view of the pavilion. And next is the Alor pavilion. This pavilion is also for entertainment for this time, a little restricted, just for theater play, storytelling, and to also dine or sit close to the pool. So this is another view of the Alor Pavilion. So I use timber, um, the brick, the brick floors, and laterite for the for the seats around there. So an overview, our ancestors were never too far from us. Probably we didn't call on them in a language that they understand. But here is one. So do not worry. Our ancestors are constantly going to be with us. So I would want to say a few words. As you can't tell the contents of the coconuts, either good or bad, without opening it yourself. That's the similitude of judging a culture without experiencing and fully understanding it. I can say I know more about my culture now and there's so much more to find and know. It only gets more interesting. The knowledge, experience, relationship gained so far through CPD Africa is awesome. And it's been a joyful experience so far. And I'm looking forward to more. <laughs> I want to say thank you to CPDI, to Mrs. Madly, and every professor and team, our mentors, and my fellow interns. You all made this special for me. So I want to say a very big thank you to everybody. And I want to appreciate two of my classmates that collaborated with me on this project with the sculpting of the columns. Um, they really did a lot of work. And to my cousins for housing me, because I have to move out of my house because of light issues in Nigeria. And <laughs> my family and fiance continually supporting and encouraging me. So thank you.